Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Your Jazz Show, another exciting edition, this, this time featuring a jazz poet we've never had on our show before. Uh, Francesca Nemco is her name, and she'll be talking about some of the uh, excerpts from her Unity concert that she did with a jazz group. And uh, overall, a very exciting, let's just say, detour from the standard jazz that we've had on the show. Uh, today's sponsors are... Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I have with me uh, jazz poet Francesca Nemco, and she has been in this area, oh, for five to ten years off and on, and we're going to kind of delve into some subjects regarding poetry and the jazz scene and exactly what is jazz poetry. So with that, I'm going to ask you, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here. Exciting. Uh, I've, I realize that you've been... Um, playing with words and poetry and music and all putting that together. So if you can explain to our viewers, what is jazz poetry? Well, I should go back to when I first started writing poetry, which was a long time ago, but not as long ago as I would imagine it to be. I was never interested in poetry uh, when I was in school or even after that. It was just never a subject I had any interest in. I lived in England and of course I was exposed to many wonderful poets, but that wasn't my, my thing. But uh, when I was in my 20s, my late 20s, I was managing a jazz club in London. Hmm. And jazz was my thing. From very early on, I started listening to jazz when I was about 13 or 14. We had great jazz in England at that time. Anyway, I was listening uh, to jazz, and a few words started popping into my head. I had no idea what this was all about. It was the strangest combination. And so I tried to kind of dismiss it at first, but um, then more lines came. Hmm. And I thought, you know what, I better write this down. <laughs> so I'm behind a bar of all places in a jazz club, and I'm writing down this strange stuff. So a whole piece came out. I don't have it with me now, and we don't need it right now. But anyway, I read it through, and I thought, I don't know what I'm talking about here. This is the oddest thing I've ever seen. But I was clever enough without realizing it, to share it with someone, a musician. And he said to me, this is very good. You should keep this and you know, look back at it again about 10 years later and see what you think. I said, 10 years later, I won't <laughs> even be here. Uh, but I did. And after I wrote that one piece, I kept it, which is very unusual. Many people don't keep that stuff. I've yeah. kept everything, by the way. And uh, more things started to come. And that was when I was still in England and still in London and working at the jazz club. And then I left England to come to the United States. And a whole new life started for me. But I continued to pursue jazz in one form or another. And I continued writing this poetry, which was the only thing I could call it. But it was all inspired by the music that I heard. Now, it wasn't all upbeat poetry. you know you know, swing stuff. Some of it was quite uh, dark, sure. uh, depending on my mood at the time. But the jazz was always what kept me going all the time. That's what inspired me to write the poetry. So uh, as I, as a performer, I'm playing behind you, actually. <laughs> uh, we try to communicate, uh, you know, levels of uh, dynamics with your, with your words and, and certainly uh, coordinate those ideas. And it's a very creative process. It is. And what I see with it is an interaction. Um, some people will say to me, oh, you do poetry with jazz accompaniment or jazz background. And it's not jazz background by any means. There's a complete interaction there. We do some things, as you know, where I'll just be uh, reading with one instrument and we're kind of really interweaving with each other. Sometimes it's the whole group and we each listen to each other. Right. And I think that's the key that we have. <laughs> Thank you. 
Francesca Nimco. I live in a world of jazz. Syncopated, annotated, inundated by cascades of words and music. A sultry saxophone crying on the soft night air, enigmatic, haunting. The very essence of improvisation. The jazz man enters, weaves among the tables, instrument held high, as if in sacrifice to the gods. Sonny Rollins, Sonny Rollins. Sonny Rollins, epitome of jazz, epitome of jazz, epitome of jazz, 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 jazz. Oh, I wish I could live my life as effortlessly as the horn man blows his horn. Take one breath and out tumble the notes all perfectly spaced and timed and so melodious. If only life flowed as easily, mellifluously, one day following another, in perfect time and rhyme. No glitches, not a bad note, pure and simple as on a water float. The the, the the whole man, the horn man knows just how to do it, to do it, to do it. A lifetime of jazz has sealed his destiny, which he graciously shares with you and me. You and me, Scooby Doo, Scooby Dee, Oo E A, Oo E A. Why do you do this to me, you old devil, Jazz? You pluck my strings. You push my pedals. You caress my body. And you take me about as far as I can go. You whisper love stories. You cry and moan, speaking to me alone. Until I discover I'm not your only lover. You come and you woo me. And of course I succumb to your seductive rhythm. As you move and sway and swing. I have no choice. I hear your sensuous voice. And I'm under your spell forever. You old devil jazz. Don't ever leave me. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. This next one is for a wonderful jazz singer named Giacomo Gates. Jazz singer. <laughs> The quintessential cool cat. Hip to the core. Long, lean body. Moving in time to an inner beat. Scooby doo, ooh, ooh. Scooby doo, ah, ah. Singing in an oh so sly voice. 
You gotta know the standards, man. You can't just scat your way in. Listen to Prez and Dizzy and Monk. Feel it all the way down to your shoes. Step it out, it's what it's all about. Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo. He really knows epistrophe and monkery. <laughs> it's what he had for breakfast. Cool cat, hip cat, sings way down into your soul. Jack a mole, Jack a mole, Jack a mole, Jack a mole, Jack a mole. I live in a world of Shulabot and ooh, blood, D. <laughs> it makes no sense except to me. Scabadoo, ooh, 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 and scabadoo, ee, ee, ee. When I'm out in the crowd and losing my way, skilly, ah, 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 shows me the way. Now Sarah sang it and so did Diz. And Lambert, Hendrix, Ross, and Bad Gonzalez, Jack and Mo, all lived in Scooby Doo. Yeah, that openness of just uh, reacting on the on the spur of the moment, uh, improvisation. Right, right, right. And that's the word because that's what I consider jazz poetry is definitely an improvisation. It's not um, a, a, a written word that's then spoken. I change my, uh, surprisingly enough, I change the poetry almost every time I do it. Even if sure. I'm saying the same piece, the last show that we did together, I did a number of well-known pieces, uh, well-known to us, yeah. and yet they came out very differently That's this right. time. Yeah, like uh, for instance, Spanish Gold, right? Right, That you right. played with Ken Husted, the bassist? Yes. And uh, talk about that a little bit. Well, actually I played, I did Spanish Gold with um, uh, Gary Drysdale oh, on guitar. Okay. Uh, although I do do a single one with, uh, with Ken. Well, in, in Spanish Gold, the idea was to get a Spanish feeling to it. And uh, Gary just played a very Spanish-tinged piece. It wasn't a, you know, a set piece of any kind. He just played a lot of Spanish-feeling music behind mm -hmm. it. And we interwove with each other. And he would listen to me, and if you see, when you see it, uh, which you will be soon, it's wonderful. Gary has this incredible smile on his face, so it's the most <laughs> wonderful thing in the world that ever happened to him. <laughs> and I feel the same way as I'm reading the, the words. Yeah, and so by the way, we enhanced the poem a little bit. Oh, uh, there's a couple of things that we've added since we did the show, but in Spanish Gold in particular, we went up to Morro Bay, of course we're cheating, we have a little mini Spain in Morro Bay, <laughs> it's very Mediterranean yes. there, and there was one of those uh, big ma tall mast ships was in dock for a while, so we went up there, uh, our videographer and myself, and filmed me against the backdrop of the ocean and the uh, the ship. The large ship and it sails. Yeah, and there. it kind of, it switches back and forth in the poem, and it's quite effective. Well, that's exciting. Uh, you know, interactive video as well as um, having images that are kind of bring in that imagery. I mean, it's just, it's perfect for that. Yes. Uh, well, you know, you've been around the area. Um, I know that you've gone back to L.A. a couple times. Mm -hmm. And um, let's talk about the creative atmosphere here in San Luis Obispo County. 
Well, it's a very creative atmosphere here. It requires staying with it. You know, it doesn't just come to you. It's not, I mean, there are some places in the world, I suppose, like the left bank in Paris is probably you just put your foot on the ground and you're a creative. But <laughs> that doesn't quite happen here. Uh, it is necessary, uh, as you know, because you are a very integral part of this creative community. But I did find that um, each time I came here and then left, when I would come back, it took me very little time to integrate myself back into the uh, scene. Uh, I started back in with my poetry and jazz and with writing. I do write for some local publications from time to time. Uh, mm -hmm. The Tribune, I'll have an occasional jazz review or a jazz uh, article in there. And I write for a uh, downbeat. Um, and I've also written for Jazz Times and the LA Times, by the way, when wow. I lived down there. I did uh, jazz, mostly uh, reviews, but uh -huh. I've done uh, some mostly concert and club reviews album reviews, but I've also done quite a number of artist profiles. Uh, I also have a class. You mentioned this before we uh, went on the show, that I have an ongoing class, and I love the title of this. It's called Excavating Your Buried Treasure. Perfect. And what we're doing in that class is bringing out the creativity, and there is so much, Dow. I'm so impressed mm. with how much creativity we have in our rather small town. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, you really have to create a niche. Um, you know, you just can't expect things to uh, happen for you unless you're actively involved and real realize that this is something that, yeah, you got to be focused. And if you want to go out and get gigs or if you want to go out and, uh, you know, uh, do a concert, promote it, book it, it's got to be an active yes. policy. Yes. In fact, when I was here uh, previously, I've been back in, in the area, um, I think it's almost two years now after being gone for four years. Prior to that, I was here for about seven years. And if you remember, because uh, you were part of this, I did some concert producing too. I brought in Giacomo Gates right. and um, a sax couple of saxophone players from LA. and. Um, it did take some work. Oh, yeah. It's, it takes some effort, and it takes a lot of publicity. <laughs> yeah, a lot of um, you know, phone calls and uh, right. getting on the horn. And uh, you know, when you bring in uh, star talent like that, uh, you got to have a rhythm section. And luckily, I was part of that section, too. That's right. And I recall uh, every one of those performances that we did was really uh, exciting. And I look back at that as, as a wonderful learning experience and uh, opportunity. Yes, well, what I found with that is that the work that goes into it is there's such a reward mm -hmm. afterwards. Now, if I were going to an office, which I used to do years ago and typing away, <laughs> that's not a reward to me. But presenting some jazz, which I love so much, and then seeing how the audience responds and how the artist feels. I'm just so excited afterwards, and I'm high for days. Yeah, I have the same feeling. <laughs> I'm sure. On, yes. On Sunday night was just uh, stellar. I mean, every one of those p performers came out and gave it 110 percent, and uh, you know, you just felt like we lived. <laughs> you know, yes, we I, really did live yes. life to the fullest. To the fullest, and that's the way I feel when I do. I don't do this often enough. My jazz and poetry. Hopefully, we'll be doing a, another concert soon. Yeah. So we'll keep that on the uh, front burner. But I always feel very, very rewarded and very high after I do a show like this because this mostly, it has to, it's not my words that I'm so excited about, it's the interaction yeah. between all these creative beings. And the audience too. And the audience, which is m as important as we are. Because without the audience, yeah. we're just doing it to ourselves. And, you know. That's right. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, we're we're going to let our viewers see more of your uh, performance. And we'd love to have you back another time. Great. I really enjoyed it. Thank Good you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back for another episode later. Uh, this second one I wrote uh, quite some while ago. It's called Spanish Gold. It features Gary Drysdale on guitar and uh, tells of a journey and where it takes us. I dreamed I went to Spain to search for Spanish gold. I sailed there on a three-mast ship. I was not alone for all my friends were with me and some people I didn't know. The journey was delightful, all calm sea and gentle breezes. 
when we hit the shores of Spain, it was like a dream come true. Spanish gold was everywhere, you know. Every tree, every flower, every bird, every fish, all were colored gold. And as we ventured further inland, what did we discover but that every person, every house, was colored gold. So, here we were in Spain, surrounded by gold. And were we satisfied and delighted? No. Suddenly, we all felt deceived, as though we had stumbled upon a fantastic scene from some long forgotten grim fairy tale. Everywhere we looked was gold, everything we touched, gold. We ran here and there, up and down, round and round, but always found only gold. We were hungry and the food was gold. We were thirsty and the water was gold. We were cold and the fires glowed gold with not a single ray of warmth. We crept slowly back to our ship anchored in the bay, expecting it to be turned to gold. Well, imagine our surprise and joy to see our beautiful ship untouched. We tumbled over each other, running aboard, checking everything to see if it was real. Or was it gold? But no, it was as we had left it. We set sail and steered a course from whence we came. An immense satisfaction came over us all, and we knew we need seek no further for our dreams to come true. Well, now this one I just love. It's one of my very favorites. It's called Hangin' with Sweetie. And it's all about a beautiful pussycat that I met and also a lesson that I learned from her. As I was walking beneath the shading eucalyptus trees, I thought how sweet it would be to see the cat I had encountered some time previously. No sooner was the thought complete than there she was, coming seemingly out of nowhere, with a meow of greeting and a rub of her head against my leg. I leaned over to pet her for a while, and then I decided to sit against a tree. Sweetie, which is what I call my new friend, was rolling over pleasurably in the dirt. No sooner did I have the thought, oh, how nice it would be to have her come and sit with me, than there she was, climbing into my lap. She stayed very alert, though. And soon, two dogs with their human companions came into view. Sweetie stayed perfectly still until the coast was clear. And then she let down her guard ever so slightly. It was quite a while before Sweetie settled down completely and closed her eyes and relaxed. And so did I. What a lesson, I thought. Cats take their time to settle into a new place, making sure that everything is just right. Not us, not we humans who charge ahead, as if today, this moment, was the last there was. Oh, how did we lose the art of taking time, making time, each moment precious in and of itself? Sweetie knows something I don't know. 
But I'm learning slowly to trust that instinct that suddenly said to me, Sweet is going to jump off your lap now. And she did, wandering along the path to enjoy more precious moments, as I did right after her. And here's what she left for me. Instructions from the cat. Remember to clean yourself every day. Remember to stretch every day. Follow your nose. Sniff out the way. Roll over often. <laughs> this one is called Mount Kilimanjaro. And going back to what I said a little earlier, it has to do with the inner discovery. There is a Mount Kilimanjaro within all of us that we scale from time to time. And you'll get the point when you hear the piece. I'm climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, even though I'm nowhere near Africa. I don't have to be, you see, because the mountain is inside of me. I feel strong enough to reach the peak, and I have all the time I need to accomplish it. However, I have no maps to guide me for I'm in uncharted territory. It's the first, I'm the first explorer to even attempt this climb. I've been preparing for this adventure for a very long time, even though I didn't know it. But here it is, and I'm on my way one step. Rest a while. I cannot see the peak, so I must trust that I'm on the path which will lead me to my goal. I'm climbing in the sunlight and in the darkest night. Sometimes I slip and slide and fall. Then I wait and I recall the words I've heard that inspire me to go on, like, Nothing's impossible, I have found, for when my chin is on the ground, I pick myself up, dust myself off, and start all over again. So says the old song, with words that I can live by. I know the mountain top is there, and I don't always care whether or not I reach it. It's the journey that counts and the sights along the way that keep me striving to seek within for the strength, the understanding, 